somewhere between early stage venture cap and those buyout companies, there are a group called growth equity investors. So they invest in companies that have already, well, they have some traction, but need a little capital to get to the next level. My next guest is one of them, Brian Rich. He is the co-founder and managing partner of Catalyst Investors. The firm focuses on technology-enabled companies, very active here in New York City. Brian, welcome to Money Moves. Glad you're with you. us. Great. Now, you founded your company in the year 2000, so right after the, the crazy dot-com boom, right? Indeed, yeah. And you are somewhere, as we just described, between early stage VC and LBO. Describe where you see opportunities and the size that suits you. Well, let me first talk about what we do. So between early stage investing, which people focus on, who are the investors in Facebook? Uh, and then on the other side, uh, who are doing the KKR style buyout deals is a whole gamut of transactions that can be done. Uh, of that, we're growth equity. So growth equity is looking at businesses Proven technologies, we're not technology investors per se, we're technology enabled investors. Um, so we're looking for businesses that are in industries that are growing way faster than GDP, perhaps as much as say uh, 10 to 20 percent uh, per annum. Uh, and businesses with proven products, proven demand characteristics. So just to give us a few examples, I mean, what industries of this kind look good to you right now? Here in New York, you know, it's, I think you all reported a few months ago that New York has surpassed Boston as the second business VC market, second biggest VC market. Um, you know, the ad tech space, uh, the digital media space is very interesting, so we spend time in those spaces. The other thing that has been overlooked for some time is just the classic media businesses that are really doing fairly well at figuring out how to participate in a digital space. So those here in New York, anyway, I think those are the three biggest areas. So digital media, cloud, it sounds like, uh, and I'm assuming there's a wireless connection in here somewhere as well. Well, cloud is another whole area. I and mean, th there is an area where I could say in the next 10 years or so, you're going to go from approximately, say, 10% of uh, software that is in the cloud today to maybe 90% of it being in the cloud. So it's an absolutely fabulous uh, growth area. And Brian, I mean, just as far as your role goes, I heard you say what you are and what you aren't, but can you give us an example of a, tra a transaction that worked particularly well for your company? Sure, well, we had a company uh, called Message Labs. Um, over the years, we were one of the first uh, investors in the software as a service space in 2000. Um, ultimately, the company got sold in 2008 to Symantec, uh, but we were with it from a fairly early uh, stage. And, and was that your grow. goal, just out of curiosity, for a company such as Symantec to yeah. buy it? Yeah, well, I think that we all, when we're making the investment, we're forming our initial thesis. The idea is, of course, to say, how big can the company be? And, of course, who do you think the buyers are going to be? Um, we're less, uh, speaking for us anyway, we're less inclined to go with companies that are going to do an IPO and more inclined to go with companies that we think are going to be strategic in nature. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. What kind of changes? You've seen a lot, obviously, starting in 2000, and then we had the credit crisis in yep. 2008. What have those two big periods of crisis meant to your firm? I think uh, since 2008, what I noticed when we go out and talk to uh, investors, investors are far more empowered now than they used to be. I think that, um, you know, before that period of time, I think the asset class as a whole, if you look at private equity, including venture capital, there's about $3 trillion in the asset class, about a trillion dollars on the sidelines. Um, I think there was a feeling, you know, in the early years that investors were far less um, discriminating about uh, which firms to invest in and strategies and things of that sort. And I think they've become far more empowered about it uh, since then. But I think it is a great asset class. It is a great asset class. And just here in New York, it seems like you're saying there's tons of growth and tons of money basically on the yep. sidelines looking for good ideas. Yeah, I think nationwide. I, saw, I just saw you put up some stats about how strong the U.S. is. It's, you know, if you look at the industry, including uh, early, late stage venture growth and all the way, we're big job creators. Um, uh, obviously, big company creators and a, po a positive for the economy as a whole. Uh, but I think a net positive overall. Okay, Brian, we hope you come back. Thanks very much.